This is a four digit seven segment LED display that uses a TM1637 controller IC. Now there are many video guides that already show you how to use this with microcontrollers such as Arduino. So rather than cover well trodden ground, in this video I'll show you how to modify this module to take full advantage of all the features of the TM1637. If we look at the TM1637 datasheet, this controller can drive up to six digits as well as read inputs from 16 buttons. So some pins on the controller ship are not being used. This display module is actually a clone of Seed Studio's Grove 4-digit display. As there may be several variants of this clone, do not assume that the same pins of the IC are connected up to the 7-segment LEDs in the same way as the one I have here. Set your multimeter to continuity testing and trace the connections yourself. On my board, pins grid 5 and grid 6 are not connected. These must be broken out to a header. Additionally, all 8 segment pins should be broken out as well. I'm soldering solid core wire to the unused grid 5 and grid 6 pins of the IC and connecting them to header pins to make them breadboard friendly. Instead of soldering wires directly to pins SEG1 to SEG8, it is much easier to use the anodes of the LED display. And here is the completed breakout. Admittedly not very tidy, but it will do for breadboard experimentation. The TM1637 can only be used with common anode LED displays such as the two digit seven segment module shown here. The grid 5 and grid 6 pins are connected to the two common anodes. As you can see the extra two digits are displaying numbers independently of the existing four digits. The Grove 4 digit library for Arduino can be used as is provided your program sends each digit to the display separately instead of sending a complete six digit number. Now let us connect a button press input. The pins K1 and K2 were also left unconnected and must be broken out to the header pins. The controller chip uses these in combination with the eight segment pins to scan two rows of buttons. I have only two buttons connected up here. I've modified the Grove 4-digit LED library to add functions for reading the key press state from the TM1637. Now that we've demonstrated that the chip can be used to read button presses, it is time to scale this up to the full 16-button keypad. We cannot use just any 16 button keypad because quite often these are connected up in a 4x4 matrix. With the TM1637 we really need a 2x8 matrix. This can be breadboarded using 16 buttons or soldered up on perfboard. If you don't have 16 buttons to spare in your parts bin, you can make a rudimentary membrane keypad using cardboard and copper tape. I'm using slug tape from Poundland. Even though the membrane buttons are arranged in a square grid, the copper strips are connected up in a 2x8 configuration. The two copper strips on the bottom layer are connected to pins K1 and K2 of the controller IC. The eight copper strips of the top cardboard layer are connected to the SEG1 to SEG8 pins. By reading one byte from the TM1637, we can find out which of the 16 buttons is being pressed. It cannot handle more than one button being pressed, however. Although you can buy TM1637 modules that connect up all six digits and provide a few input buttons, these may not be in a configuration suitable for your microcontroller project. Also, you don't necessarily have to drive a 7 segment display. So if your project needs a simple LED display and a small input keypad, but your microcontroller only has a couple general purpose I.O. pins to spare, try modding one of these 4 digit modules.